Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. These short 10 minute sessions will teach you KQL, allow you to get hands on practice in a lab environment, and provide some homework to practice after the session. This is the sixth video in the KQL Intermediate series. In the last session, we focused on variables. In this session, we'll introduce external data. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. When using data sets in either Azure Data Explorer, ADX, or Log Analytics Workspaces, LAWS, there are many different tables that can help answer questions. Sometimes the information you need isn't available in the existing tables, and you have to bring it in from external sources. In addition, when you produce query results, you may want to export those results in files, emails, or other formats. Let's start out in the LA demo environment. If you need instructions to access this free environment, refer to session seven of the KQL Beginner series. In this example, we have a query and we've produced some results. We may want to export those results to a CSV file, Power BI, or an Excel file. To do this, we can click on the dropdown next to export. We can choose to export all the columns or only the columns that are displayed. Let's select only columns displayed. When we export to a CSV file and open it, we can adjust the columns as needed and manipulate the query results from Excel or other programs that support that file type. We can also share our query by either sharing just the results, sharing the query, or sharing a link to the query that others can access. Now let's try to ingest information from an external source. First, we can set a variable. In this case, we'll call it OSINT for Open Source Intelligence. The external source we're using in this case is a daily list of malicious IPs. We use external data to signify we're reaching out to pull data in. Next, we identify the field names we want to pull in and to find a data type. In this case, we're only pulling in the IP field and we're casting it to a string data type. In the brackets, we start with the at symbol, then place the URL in quotes. We always end the let statement with a semicolon. So now we want to test this variable out and make sure it works. We can call the variable and take 100 as a sample just to make sure the connection works. We can see the output is a list of suspicious IPv4 addresses. If we navigate to this URL, we can see the original data source. What if we want to see if any of those IP addresses are being used by virtual machines in our network? Let's take a look at the VM connection table and take a sample. We can see it has destination IPs associated with VM connections. Let's set a time domain of the last 90 days and see if we have any matches. We can search in the destination IP field to see if anything on the OSINT list is in it. We can see that this use of a variable and use of an external file can create many new possibilities for queries. You can ingest text files, CSVs, and even JSONs. Let's try another practical example. In this example, we want to pull external data that includes a field that contains malware hash values. First, let's make sure we can pull data from the external source. We'll start off by setting a variable for the external source. Since it contains hash values for known malware, let's call our variable underscore malware hashes. We place the external data operator inside of parentheses, and in a second set of parentheses, we can define the field we want called SHA-256 underscore hash. Next, we want to cast that field to a string data type. Now we place the external link inside of brackets and inside of quotes. We make sure that the at symbol is before the quotes. Lastly, we close up all of our parentheses and place a semicolon to complete the variable statement. To test the link and make sure it pulls information, we can call the variable on the next line. We can see that it displays some information on the top before the actual malware hash files. 
if we wanted to exclude all the commented lines on the top before the hash values, how could we do that? We can see that the pound character is used for comments above the hash lines. We can use doesn't starts with and the pound symbol. We can add that to our existing let statement on a second line. Keep in mind that let statements can be many lines and they can include pipe characters. Just remember as your let statements grow, the end of the let statement is still marked by a semicolon. Now let's call the variable again and see what it displays. Now it just displays the malware hashes we're interested in and nothing else. Now that we know that we can receive just the information we want, formatted in the data type we want, and pull that without any errors, we could use that variable to check tables in our data set to see if they contain those hash values. We could also write an alert to notify us when we have a match. We'll focus more on setting alerts in future series, but for now we've successfully completed pulling external data into our Log Analytics workspace environment. For the next exercise, let's switch over to Azure Data Explorer or ADX. If you need instructions on accessing free ADX datasets to practice, reference video two of the KQL Beginner Series. Since it's been a little while since we worked in ADX, don't forget the cluster, database, and table hierarchies that are different than in the Log Analytics workspace environment. In this example, we pulled a sample from the customer's table. Just like in our Log Analytics workspace, we can export the results into Power BI, Excel, or CSV format. We can also easily link to the query or results. If we look on the left-hand column, we can see My Cluster. We can see many options listed and one is to ingest data from a local file or blob storage. I made a test CSV file with two columns. The first has a random set of numbers and the second has a random set of letters, just for the demo purposes. When I click ingest, it asks me if I want to ingest into an existing table or create a new table. Let's create a new table and call it test. When we click next, it asks for our source file. So we can just drag the test file we created into the upload files area. Once we get a green checkbox, we're ready to move on. Next, we have to set the data format. If you make it to this screen and you see a bunch of characters that don't look right, your file is likely not in a format that's recognized. ADX does a good job of automatically changing the settings for the file type. Here we see the actual field names along with the actual data in each field. On the top, we can see it's automatically set the random number field to a long data type and the random letters to a string data type. If we wanted to change these data types, we can. Let's change it to a real data type. We can also change the field names here if we wanted to. So now we're ready to ingest the new data and create our new table. After the ingestion is complete, we can see that it succeeded. And we can preview our new data set as it would appear in the table. Now that we're done, let's go access our newly created table. We can see that we have a My Free Cluster and My Database in the left-hand column. When we expand the database, we see our newly ingested test table. Let's take a sample of the test table. We can now write KQL queries against what was an Excel spreadsheet a moment ago. We could also join this data set with existing data sets if we wanted to. We'll focus more on joining data sets later in the intermediate series. For homework this week, make a CSV file with at least two fields and upload the CSV file to a newly created table in ADX. Once it's uploaded, write several queries on your new data set, then export the results back to a CSV file. That's it for today's session on external data. In the next session, we'll introduce argmax, rounding of numbers, and we'll start to join two data sets together with unions. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.